Well, good day and welcome back to the channel. This notebook I just finished, this is my sketch journal. It's not exclusively sketching, it was writings of different kinds, sketches, illustrations, uh, brainstorming, some photography, some collage art, a lot of different things went into this notebook. It started on the 2nd of February, 2021, and it went up until the 10th of May, 2022, just a few weeks ago. It's an inexpensive Exceed brand dot grid notebook that I got from Walmart for roughly $5, and it served me quite well. And now I have this new notebook to start. This is a stitch-bound notebook that my friend Ethan helped me make, and it uh, uses 32-pound laser paper, uh, blank paper, and I'm looking forward to using this notebook. I've already started one page in it, but I thought it would be fun before I retire this one to the archives. Maybe we might want to take a look at it, and this might be a source of inspiration for you. It's not great art or anything, but it might be inspiring to you, and you might be interested in what kind of crazy ideas I sketch and write and draw about. So stay tuned. Well, here is the notebook. Uh, okay, so the 2nd of February, 2021. Pilot Plumix with Copper Noir. So my dearest Andrea just recommended that I next start using this Walmart dot grid journal uh, since I've finished my quarter sized journal. Bill Taft had visited me that day, and we did a video about one of his typewriters, if I'm not mistaken. So here's a little bit of a pen test on the 2nd of February. Lamy Safari, Pilot Plumix, Keiko Rocket, Black and Blue, Bic Velocity 16, see Zebra, Cicera Dry, Bic French Style, the M10, the big bureau medium, U.S. government skill craft. I'm obviously testing this out at my friend Ethan's, but so Ethan gave up fountain pens due to the couch incident on their new new on their new bedroom sofa. The couch incident, bro, not a smiley face incident. So that was very hilarious. And so Ethan, actually, Ethan does use fountain pens occasionally, I think, but. He doesn't really use them in, in the house anymore because he's been taught. Anyways, more sketch journals. Uh, very fun writing stuff. So here is the 9th of February. Compact pocket cameras. An entry about, you know, compact film cameras, point and shoots. And I'm actually looking at designs for homemade cameras with plano convex two element lens designs using Fresnel lenses to simulate a doublet kind of lens design, which is kind of interesting. And here is an idea on the 9th of February for a collapsible box camera that it has these corner pleats that collapses down kind of like a bellows. Each of the panels is rigid material, but they has flexible joints with tape, let's say gaffer's tape, and you could collapse it down into a box that you could like carry with you in your pocket. And then it would have a flip up of uh, peep sight viewfinder, maybe a Fresnel lens, a simple lens, and a spring-loaded shutter, and a, a sheet of paper negatives or a film or something. Kind of an interesting idea. And the idea is when it's folded or collapsed down, it's no thicker than an iPhone. And it's about the same form factor. So you have this iPhone-shaped device that's a single-shot box camera. And then I have some notes here about a sliding slit shutter that has a, it fires or slides sideways, maybe spring loaded, a variable width slit for the shutter speeds. And then once it stops, the lens is covered, and then you cock it by pushing it back. It keeps the lens covered, and then you open it up again to start shooting. Anyway, just an idea for a simple slit spring loaded shutter. And then this was some ideas for the body of the camera. Uh, I was experimenting with folding a sheet of paper and making like a pleat, you know, this kind of fold that you make a paper airplane out of, collapsing it down into a design that would lay flat and then open up. Okay, so now 15 February, this is five days later, I'm using some uh, scrap pizza box and some other materials to make this little collage. Prepare yourself it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. And then I have critical mass, I have bombs, and I have 
LLNL, LANL, SNL, Y12, and KCNSC. And you can look those acronyms up yourself. But anyways, oh yeah, so the main ob object here is intended to be kind of a large bomb, but then I think the thing that actually started this thing in my mind was this little symbol right here. Got a little glare on it. It's supposed to be a round pizza with a slice being pulled out, but it looks kind of like a implosion device with, you know, explosive lenses, which I thought was kind of, and it, kind of the shape I cut it out at. It's kind of very interesting, right? Okay, at least for me. Oh, yes, so this is one of these paper sacks to uh, Trader Joe's, and I thought the artwork is kind of actually creepy. Look at this kid with wide-eyed gaze, and he's like starving. He's like a street waif, and they're eating some unrecognizable plate of something in the middle of the woods. Uh, anyways, so I had to do a little collage about that. Um, rethinking my typewriter collection, right? So just some thoughts there. You guys can pause the video and read more about that if you'd like. These are more thoughts about the Royal KMM, the 2nd of March last year 2021 ethan and i made this mega hike at least mega for me a exhaustive for me hike in the ojito wilderness which is about 30 miles northwest of albuquerque in the blm um, bureau of land management public lands and ethan had brought along a hasselblad with a polaroid back a peel apart polaroid and when i got these prints back from our hike i cut them out with a pair of coping scissors and made these tiny little prints here that I stuck into my notebook with an Uhu glue stick. And you can see this was out of date Polaroid film so that has some weird colors and stuff. We did some black and whites also. Drawing ideas here for my Afghan box camera and having five different developer slots, vertical slots in the bottom of the box for um, the direct positive reversal process. Also, I got my uh, fountain pen writings a little damp and the ink bled a little bit. That's part of the risk. Uh, let's see, oh yes, some Triumph Norm 6 repair notes. This is uh, Knox. I got a pair of Knox binoculars and they came with a sticker, so I like to put the sticker in it. Oh yeah, this was some notes that I made when Ethan was teaching me the Onshape CAD program. And then this is my storage box idea for my KMM typewriter. This was basic measurements I made. And then I sold two typewriters on, this is the 22nd of March, and this is a hybrid box camera project. Putting a cell phone inside of here and making prints off of a negative image off a cell phone screen inside of a box, which I actually did. Uh, more notes on pens. Um, more notes on camera tripod supports. And, oh yeah, this is a camera support idea. I'm actually using, which you can't see, is a boom arm roughly based on this idea. This is a wooden stick with a five pound barbell weight, an adjustable block, and a tripod ball head. That's what I'm actually using right now. A solenoid powered type bar machine. So I've had these ideas for uh, making a uh, DIY typewriter out of uh, electric, electric typewriter. Uh, I would, did some sketching, hand sketching, of literally my hand. We also made this stamp from an etching, or actually a carving that I did into linoleum block. This is a Venn diagram of typewriters, which is very interesting. Type bar typewriters. Here is more stamps, stamp work. Oh yeah, this is a vertical slot chemical processors, right? Some thoughts on the Lamy Safari fountain pen. This is a drying holder for fiber-based papers to reverse curl the paper so that it won't, uh, it'll dry flat, right? Uh, oh yeah, so this is a light trap idea made from laser cut acrylic. And this is an idea for turning a watch box into a camera. This was an idea for a extendable bellows, a collapsible bellows that kind of collapses in on itself. Here is my arm sleeve box camera, which we ended up building. Some reversal print tests. Our new design of the Albuquerque box camera, the Afghan box camera that's more vertically oriented, which we ended up building, but it's the basic layout here. 
This was an interesting idea. I call this the Seesaw Film Processor, and the idea was you have this box with different compartments, and you pour liquid into one end and tilt the box 90 degrees and tilt it back and tilt it back and tilt it back and it transfers the liquids from one compartment to the other into the developing chamber and into a waste container. You can also build it, in fact I did build it with little cups like this that you tilt it this way and that way and this way and that way and it just pours each batch one stage at a time like that, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I ended up designing a little bit more modified, I call it the Jiffy, Joe's Ingenious Fluid Flipping Yowza. And you pour the chemicals in the top and you just go like that, and like that, and like that, and like that, and it transfers each batch of chemical, one batch at a time. The, the film or paper is here. The waste comes out on the bottom, back into its original container. More variations on the same design. With this one is probably very efficient as far as the size of it and more ideas for the same thing and more ideas for the same thing and then how to build one with these uh, kind of laser cut parts was an idea anyway so yeah very fun uh, so a carousel uh, operated a film camera Another idea for a film camera. Okay, the 22nd of September 2021. Wow. These are Polaroid Zinc prints, which are thermal printed, and they're adhesive stickers. And then I just typed some really silly stuff here. These were just test shots, and someone had given me some stickers, and I just collaged them together into these really dumb collages. Oh yes, yeah, so the ABQ box camera, as I was building it, I started taking Polaroid Zinc photos, or at least I took photos on my phone, I think, and printed them to the Polaroid Zinc. And some DIY building shots, first tests of the ABQ box camera. And then I had an idea for a uh, better selfie stick. And then uh, at Ethan's, oh, this is some um, test shots with the Polaroid Zinc off my iPhone, which I kind of like. And this was an old photograph, old pinhole photograph that I, I downloaded from Flickr that I had uploaded to Flickr years ago, and then I <laughs> printed it to Polaroid Zinc, which is kind of an interesting backwards way of doing things. My arm sleeve pinhole camera, another variation on it. This was a typewriter support uh, table that raises up your typewriter higher up on a normal table and it's with folding legs and little braces that might be fun to build and I had made variations on this idea with laser cut wood and okay so then we get into some Fuji Instax and this is a pinhole photo taken by our friend Becky oh yeah recipe for middle-aged malaise one part fortune 500 corporate career Stir for 28 years, add in stale cigar butts to taste, soak in animal fats and carbs for 64 years, marinade in childish hobbies while ignoring adult responsibilities, salt to taste. That's the recipe for middle-aged malaise. Uh, I like this. Uh, black and white Fuji Instax, some little poems to go along with them. And this is a cigar band, uh, which is pretty cool. This is a spam can camera insert that we were working on. So this is a really neat part of this notebook. This was out of a Life magazine from the mid-1960s that someone gave me. And I decided to continue with my same theme of Cold War nuclear weapons. And so we have the basic warhead shape, uh, lead-free, Russian Fright, Remington Electronic II, and I'm using the Uhu glue sticks for this. This uh, Merv uh, warhead, uh, reentry warhead, was actually a glass of beer, which is very apropos. An ordeal for life. You can recognize the Life magazine logo. Uh, battle plan for life. Now this was, I was rather proud of this particular weapon because it's actually a collage from a car ad. You can see the doors and the fenders and the grill work uh, making up this uh, ICBM. It's re-entering over the desert with a six pack of Pepsi in the background. This was kind of neat. Watch out for the other guy. Strike. Pain, punish, nightmare, hurt, shock. Another little, this is actually a blue Santa cap, a fuzzy Santa cap originally, but it's a re-entry vehicle. 
behind the green and red peppers, of course, and the little flames. Oh yes, and then this we have the British nuclear weapon style with hammer and sickle symbol, terror, and lucky strike. Just a love tap, folks. Just a love tap. Oh yeah, another thing to see, never again, EMP. And this is kind of interesting. Another little car advertisement made into a weapon and back to the Stone Age. And then I like this one best. I think of all these, this is pretty lipstick and hope. And I kind of like what I did with the profile image with the front facing eyes, kind of a Picasso-esque kind of composition, I think. Anyway, so that was pretty fun and loved doing that. Here are some ideas for collapsible cameras that you would roll up with the clothespin or clamps. Paper and foil collapsible cameras. Another idea, more of the same. Oh, this is uh, the shape of my personal timeline where when I think of the present in the t early 2020s, and it goes back to about the 2010s, and it bends around to the 2000s, and it goes back through the 20th century in kind of a meandering shape, and then the centuries prior to the 20th century kind of go back like this in the distance. And that's kind of my personal structure of how I think about the time, the timeline. I don't know why that is. And I also have a personal structure for how I think of the weeks. The weeks are kind of like a cycle like that with Saturday and Sunday on the other end of the cycle and the years are the same way. Uh, the months of the year kind of have a similar kind of cycle. More box camera ideas, yet more collapsible camera ideas. This is where I started working. This is the 4th of January 2022. This is where I started working with this diazo paper or drafting blueprint print paper. I have a very very faint image. It's overexposed here. Um, I was trying to do a pre-flash test and found out that I actually had a good exposure along the edge. And so I did more tests. That was the 4th of January. This was a bad test. This was finally a calibration test of my exposures to get some good grays, tones, some thoughts on typing versus hoarding, which I made into a uh, video. And then I think this was my first good print on the 10th of January. A diazo paper print. It's in my world famous backyard. So this was an exposure for two hours and 15 minutes f 5.6 for two hours and 15 minutes developed in warm or room temperature ammonia. Then I was uh, designing cardboard sheet film holders. Different designs for that. More cardboard sheet film holders which is kind of cool. Another calibration test for the diazo prints. And you notice I kind of like using multicolored inks a little bit here. The more thoughts about diazo paper processing, some exposure tests. Um, hey, there's a Google Play card. There's another cigarette band or cigar band, a box camera designed explicitly for diazo uh, paper. An idea for my live stream setup where my face is on a black and white TV screen uh, using an analog video camera through my VCR into an old black and white TV, which I kind of do sometimes. Well, here's another Diazo print, print. I like this one. It's very cool. An hour and ten minutes exposure. Another idea for a, a camera, for a dedicated Diazo print camera with a fast lens. And, oh yeah, we have some nicer results here. This is over at Ethan's house, I believe. Winter light, but hey, got some grayscale in there. The cooler on the roof of Ethan's house. Okay, we're getting toward the end of February 2022. More thoughts about my analog TV setup for my live streams. Oh, this is another collage I finally ended up doing. Uh, let's see, this is... LS MFT filter cigarettes with an eyeball and then he gave life and nice, I don't know, it's kind of funny just working with these old ads from the 1960s. This is where I came up with the word scruffians which was because of an incident with a beater car in the right lane that was riding on the line of the right lane and I just made a comment to myself, scruffians. Some ideas for my abacus exhibit at the library and some more abacus history and some abacus math notes and more abacus stuff. Some more notes about my abacus exhibit. This is uh, some notes about a repair I did on my Royal Mercury uh, and 
more abacus stuff. This is where I started to map out the operational space of different styles of abacus. Um, some Vedic multiplication. Some ideas for Soroban beads using discs and little tubes. Some viewfinder sketches for little peep side viewfinders. Kowloon Walled City, some notes about that. Oh yes, some stickers that my grandson had uh, collected and gave to me. I started doing this way of writing the date down, kind of a tic-tac-toe grid arrangement with two different colors of ink. I kind of like that. And, in, and when I had wasted space, I started actually drawing wasted space here in little boxes so I could rent out the space to other people which was kind of a silly idea. And more stickers, Abacus Operation Mapping, Make Every Day Count, which turns into an acronym of MEDCO, Your Daily Medicine, Make Every Day Count. Uh, tactical Knurling, that's very important. The Matrix of Pencil Grips, this was uh, the about the video that Ethan and I did, the last video. Some little typings here, and we get into a puzzle that I solved, and more abacus operation and then more abacus thoughts and how to make some brass abacus beads a little fixture that I might make and then finally we get into the end yes the end finally and it's time to put the bookmarks up in the book put the elastic band on it and I can archive this book along with this book finally and now, putting them aside, we get to start on our new book. It was made on the 12th of January, 2021, but it sat for over a year until I finished the other one. But finally, on the 10th of May, I started this one with, yes, a pencil box. A pencil holder box. And some more notes about the abacus. Onward and upward. I should also mention that Previous to this notebook was this notebook. This was also a hand-stitched book that I had started back in the 10th of March, 2020, and it went up until, uh, what date was it? The 2nd of February, 2021. So these two books basically are contiguous one to the other. This was a smaller size book. I really like this little typewriter postcard art I put on the front. And anyways, this was kind of the start of this whole idea of a mixed media collage art sketching writing kind of a journal book and I'm really looking forward to continuing that with this new handmade book in the meantime I encourage you guys to begin your journey with sketchbook a journal book a creative book that you can put all kinds of different things into and I look forward to seeing some of your work in the future and in the meantime stay creative and have yourselves a great day Bye-bye for now.